today is Wednesday, 26th of June 2016. Um, just ringing through Nakora in Gisborne uh, shortly, uh, but I just wanted to show you my new acquirement here, the Doug gear, my bottle, regulator, clippers, goggles, and catch bag for the crayfish. Summer tea. Indeedsman, down there, East Coast. Got the gears, man. Flag to go with it. Flag on the sea. King of the sea. King of the sea. Okay? Are you people running to you? I just need myself geared up to come down uh, and have a little swim. But we got some serious business to do. I just want to uh, let you know that we're been doing a lot of thinking with the uh, history to our families, uh, my Cosgrove family and Rogan family with the Wanoors, married the Wanoors, and also Jamie's family, the Patricks and the Stewarts and the Ngatais. Hence the reason Jamie's coming down to the East Coast. Uh, we have Ngatais on our land blocks at the East Cape. And also to come and see the rising sun, Ra, at the East Cape in the morning. Hope it's going to be fine. So we can get a good view of um, um, first rising sun in the world at um, East Cape Lighthouse. Closest distance to the sun. It's right there. It's historic connection with us to Rapa Nui, East Island, Tipito there to Tipito at the East Cape, on the Haha -ha blocks, land blocks, Managaro lands and Managaro Marae, to London and to Ghana, um, Kingdom of Ghana and Accra, the point of the clock distance where the three points of Ghana um, on Accra at Phoenix Hotel on the beach is lined up at 6 p.m. with Tepito at the east coast, east cape where we're going, where the sun rises. It's lined up there at 6 a.m. in the morning and lined up with East Island 12 midday. Those three points of this globe, Earth, the sun is shining at the same time on a land spot, right? not in the sea, on the land. That's the only three points in this world that lines up as our historic points of reference to Makemake planet out at the end of the universe with Pluto and Homia, those dwarf planets out there that lines up with us and with that configuration of title to the Moai and King William flag of jurisdiction in London is at the same time 6 p.m. as Ghana, 6 p.m. only the distance in land um, uh, of two hours, three hours distance across the latitude, the longitude way. But I'm saying that's the triangle inside a square, inside a circle that matches perfectly on the globe. Okay, so those history goes with what I'm reading online as Babylon and the um, original history in Iraq um, that lines up with us. But I won't go into that at the moment. I'll leave Jamie to sort that out with her eight-point star, St. Patrick's Order in um, <coughs> Dublin. There, the church, she's more passionate about uh, finding out a bit more about that. So I'll leave that to her. And in the meantime, I will ring through Nakura. I spoke to Kingi Tauroa yesterday. And so I'll get to talk to her today. There we go. Hope she answers.
Yes, can I speak to Sue, please? John One Eye Nocklin here. Madam Prime Minister, that way. Uh, uh, I'll be coming down on Monday, so when I get there, Desmond, I'll bring uh, uh, Jamie and I and him around to see you, and just fill in. Uh, I'll just, uh, fill in where we're going, where we're at, and um, you, would you come to the meeting the next day? The, it's at um, your hotel, the Imperial Hotel. Yeah, the Tumutumu Pairoa, or one block in Rotorea. That's for the trust meeting of um, uh, having an A12 in Rotorea, land block. Just one of the ones in your area. One, one and it might be, it might be good for you to be there to see what what the hang they're go, are doing. Yeah, to the Tumutumu Pairoa. I've never been to one of the meetings yet, where they're taking the the trust uh, over, eh? the trust, married trust, but they're rearranging the, the trust administrators. I, I just want to see what they're doing. This one with, uh, it's got Monica's on it and Kanukas on it and more than likely for, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I want to see who's at the meeting, but might be give you a chance to talk. Um, I'll have a look. Oh, I'm going to talk anyway. Uh, for, for something that might we might have for there if we get funding and all that so I can organise some some team to do something on the lands. That's one of 30 blocks I'm in. That That's just one of them. And I thought, well, I better go to one of the meetings because they've been calling me to go to other meetings. Uh, now they're, they're on the way with their Maori Trust um, organisations running those lands where, where the hapu haven't got any organisation to do anything with it. On their behalf, you see. Uh, so that's that's more or less. I spoke to Kingy yesterday. Uh, you were out. No, will answer the phone. He's he's very suspicious of who rings. <laughs> he just about forgot who I am. <laughs> he just about forgot who I am. <laughs> Might be the different voice. Haven't heard for a long time. Um, I spoke. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm I'm am getting them to support your 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 government um, inside that Waitangi Marae um, uh, and clear it. Um, and he's going along with it. He's he's not going to listen to Hohepa and and or, or anybody else. Really, this is how it looks. He he and Jerry Matsuparai. And the Governor General of Australia went went to the Vietnam War together, and so they've got something going on between them, and that's the part that I want to talk to you about when I come to Gisborne, of of what's going, what's really going on in the military sense, and with you and your 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 thing, we can talk about it there when we when we come to see you, rather than not talk on the phone. Um, uh? Uh, yeah, we go to the meeting the following day. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stay at Desmond's. Oh no, he was at a he was at the Harakeke meeting. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, lucky you there because I was I, I I was starting to worry he he wasn't answering the phone to go and pick you up because it was getting the afternoon and I thought oh. Uh, then Noel said you followed had gone to a meeting. I thought, oh well, you must have gone to that meeting. Uh, thank goodness for that. You got there to uh, to King. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just want to work in with you with the Rangitukia crowd. Uh, Tamati. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did, 
there's no yeah there's no other way around it it has to be done that's the only way to get the uh, control and and he's listening to me from Waitangi and and that's that's fitting into getting something done uh, uh, soon s as soon as but I'll talk about that when I come to Gisborne. Um, um Monday on the Manabas, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming on the Manabas with Jamie. The bus, the Mana Manabas. Uh, I mean, the, the, they call it the naked bus. Yeah, I'm coming on that. It's better because it's more comfortable for me to come on that. The Hui on Tuesday, and then I go down to Rangi Tukia, eh? Yeah. And then... Yeah, yeah, they'll be at that hotel, they put it on, so they might as well go for lunch. Yeah. Might as well come and have their, eat their lunch, because they said the trust pays for all the lunch uh, at the meeting, at the hui. Oh, you missed out on it. Never mind, but go get it back when it's all done up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> A what? Indian? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, no mind. We can sort that out when I start getting headway with this Cook Street in Auckland, because uh, Ngapu is coming down to it to the court hearing. They're they're cunning. They're hanging off. The police haven't taken me to court. No, they won't say. I think they're a bit frightened of what me and Kingy are doing. I'm going to bring the whole lot of the Ngapu chiefs down, and we're going to go down and give them a bit of curry. Yeah, I think they know they're a bit uh, a bit trapped here. But that's what I want to talk about with you uh, when I come down to Gisborne, because we're going to uh, we're, we're going to use Kingy and that authority and his military thing to get get over the line but with the land. If I can get the land back, then we're, we're on our way. Yeah, that's what I want to do with the Ngāpuis. and they're going along with it. The chiefs and even Hōhep is going along with that, uh, but he wants control, and Kingy says. Hohepa, he, tr he was trying to boss me around. Hohepa. Yeah, he, you know, you know what he like. He, he, he put his coat away on in, in, in front of Kingy and, and the Mariah said to Kingy, shush, don't say a thing, just let him do what he wants to do. We've we got the keys, we, we don't worry about it, just let him and them carry on because that's the Ngāpui thing. And, um, but you know, just the chief going in front of the chief with his coat away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thingy, thingy is not, not too kind about that. No, I'm talking about the piece of land where the marae is. Is, is that his whakapapa, not uh, anybody else. Afternoon, yeah. I'll come straight there from the bus. It'll be about 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. See you. Bye. Yeah, that's the Prime Minister, Sunikoro. She'll run rings around John Key because she's she was with Sir Geoffrey Palmer in the Labour Party as his Maori policy maker, native title. She's got all the big books down there. So if I need anything, I go and see Auntie Sue. See? So she's a Harvard uh, um, Harvard uh, professor. So. Um, do you know what she's talking about? She, I think she's the last one. Bruce Gregory was the last one that went there as well as Kingy. Uh, so they're proficient in politics and anything. But when it comes to land titles, it's a different matter. She leaves that to me to handle. But she's coming to the Tumutumu Paiaroa Trust uh, meeting of trustees and shareholders, landowners of that block in Ruatoria of Wainu Awanui Road. Uh, so it'll be my first time I'll be going to um, uh, one of their trust meetings, at the Old Maori Trust. Uh, what they do is they administer land on behalf of the hapu who haven't got amongst their family members a trust of their own together, especially a um, Ahu Whenua Trust, that's the commercial side of Te Ture Whenua Act 1993. 
and all of that. Um, I'm familiar with, familiar with, I've got all that here for our Portiki Ruaki Waiapu Hapu Trust um, in all of the area of Ueta from Cape Runaway, Portaka, to Tigtigi, Marae Hara, Marae, Marae Hara, Marae, and down the Maraihara River to Rangitukia, all at the Rangitukia block, the Marangaro block on the other side of the Awatera River up to up to Whakangiangi and across. Um, that's this titles I'm talking about where we're going in <coughs> and pluck off one block at a time. First we're starting with uh, Haho 7B and Manu Raro and his trustees. They've got a trust of their own. So let's uh, point out to them. Uh, all we have to do is sit down and have a meeting with them. We're not going to have a meeting with them yet. I'm going to have a meeting back with um, Tamati, uh, Reed. If anybody there is listening, just give them a call or um, uh, see if you can come to the meeting. Anyone in the Haho 7B block would be nice to talk to you at Tamati's Kahuta, or his little marae, say, shall put it, because he'll have his own marae on his block um, at some stage when we get going. So I wanted to talk with um, Tamati on the political side. He's got a party, the Kiwi Party or something like that quite exciting. It's all right for him to do something like that. I just fit it in with Sunakora for such time as to come won't be long for that to happen. Anyway, back to Sunakora. Um, I'm going to be speaking with her, with uh, Kingi in the Waitangi Marae, um, King's Bench Court, as far as this flag is concerned, where Sue is holding this flag as well. She's promoting it she has been for years. She's one of the last Confederation of Chiefs uh, members uh, of that organisation with Mohi Manakau, the founding um, president of that organisation, 1985. I've got all these documents here, the, all, the titles, everything. So there's no argument about the Manakau Land Company in Scotland and their titles here, British titles. But I won't be bringing that up because I'm talking about kings now, King Itauru and King Edward. I'm reading into the history of the um, <coughs> um, eight-point star um, titles and Queen Victoria and King William the Fourth, King William the Third. In that period, back to King William the Third, 1890 period. That's when he took over England, off. King James, the Catholic. That's the part where the commercial part of how this flag was created um, in 1835 period of King William IV. So that legacy of the Irish side of my family, the Cosgrove and the Rogan, Cosgrove Irish and the Rogan Scottish English and also Jamie Anna Marie Patrick Stewart Ngatai, that's her names, collective names, to Whakapapa or DNA back to the land. And her Scottish Stewart family and also her Irish Patrick family to the eight point star of this flag that I'm claiming to be part of our history coming from Ulster in the north in Munster in the south of Ireland to Munster here in the South Island they call the South Island and Ulster the North Island see who would ever think of calling a country by the name of South Island and a country called North Island that seems pretty bland ordinary and they made it look and sound that way that it had no meaning 
but just north and south, instead of the Ulster and the Munster of Ireland. I'll make that specific point here that I'll be talking to Kingi in confidence and Sue uh, about Governor General Cosgrove, Paul John Cosgrove in Australia happens to be the Cosgroves in my family. Why they married the British Irish married my Wano family and the Monaco family at the same time the Rogan. Rogan married Monaco, Rogan married Wano. Rogan put the titles together and Cosgrove did the law. Lawyers. Okay? Yeah, in New Zealand. Now in Australia, Governor General. So those fit together with Queen Victoria, titles in Australia, New South Wales to here, and Victoria, Australia, the Queen Victoria part of his niece, King William the Fourth's niece, Queen Victoria, Monarch. She had the coronation and King William the Fourth. Those are the only two coronations. The Queen's coronation is false. It's fake, but the usurping King William's coronation and Queen Victoria's coronation in Australia and New Zealand. So I'm going to have a little word with Kingy and hopefully, uh, good luck, cross my swords, that Brexit will win out and exit EU Parliament with Boris Johnson. You're watching this video, Boris. Good luck to you, mate. Want to have a meeting with you and Sir George Zambellis, Rear Admiral of the Navy, British Navy, and Sir George, Sir, Sir John, Nicol Sir Nicholas Horton, Chief of the Military. Want to have a talk to you too. So that's our partners in here, New Zealand, with their flag. This flag here is the most powerful flag in the world. I want to make that statement quite clear, that it has all the hallmarks in it, even the Red Cross of the Vatican in it, and the Catholic Church part of the Red. That's England. England is more ruled by Germany and King William the Fourth's German um, connections in the family. King of Hanover. So, that's the part I want to put. I want to frame the title of the missing jewels. I put some articles on my Facebook just pointing out Babylon and the connection to the old Iraq that's been stolen by the Pope. All of those do not add up, people. They do not add up. When I go there and talk to those Iraq people, the truth will come out with Moai. The truth will come out about whose history it really is. When I look at the Muslims, they're really white men dressed up as native and the bloodlines mixed. have gone and bastardized everything, just the same as what they're doing now, raping the white people by force force their genes into them, and then off comes the offspring, the mongrel bloodlines. They keep the mongrel bloodlines going by doing that fatherless kids. Don't know who the father is because they rape them. That's their law. Sharia law is we can rape anything. Well, it's not in the Maui law. It don't work like that. Okay? Uh, they have their own religions, Jesus and everything. But the Pope discarded Jesus after using Jesus, and it's on their history. I had a look. I've been looking right through the Catholics' bad history of using Jesus. Now the Pope's got rid of Jesus and the Bibles, and he's going upstairs. He's going upstairs because there's another law higher than what he had before. So he says, I don't need that Bible anymore. I've got my own law. Islam, right? The usurping, who graded the usurping King William's titles 
finished with it, got the money out of it. Now he's using the money to pay people to shoot up everybody else and take all their history of them. So that's been a sort of conquering uh, world of kings and queens and popes that is rampant in this world. The bad side of Satan I'm looking at. The evil, that things that are not nice and make people angry, hateful, sad and dangerous in a world that wants to be peaceful. Maui was a peaceful country. It, didn't, it, ne it never spilt blood. It, it never spilt blood until the British came along and boom, with the guns. Right? They gave the guns to the other chiefs of islanders. They came and shot up my people. Right? And now they use politicians to shoot their guns from a pen in legislative acts, institute law. That's come out of this flag. That's what I'm saying. It's the most powerful flag in the world because it's a commercial trading bank flag of Britain and here in New Zealand and Pacific Islands. There's no flag like it. And I say to Kingi to speak to the Governor-General of Australia and the Governor-General here, Jerry Matapurai, that we are in a serious state of collapse of Māori because Māori was designed by British and Australian uh, immigrants that came from Britain. They fashion that to get the title so they can make money out of the land. Okay, So we are seizing those titles. This is a note to the police here in New Zealand. I'm still waiting for my court case, but I've got that much ammunition now behind me to make sure it's me and each one person of you that I go into court with. When I go into the court, I take one at a time into the court or online. Once I do Cook Street's case, then it's all online. If you can't rebut or refute or counterclaim what I say against you, you're gone. And that's what I see what's happening here, why it's taken so long. Since the 3rd of October 2015, I'm still waiting for my court case. Why is it so long? They're paying themselves out of the bond, out of my name, right? This is the part that I've got issues with fraud, John Key. You're defrauding me and my chiefs and the public of New Zealand by using instruments under King William the Fourth, where the Pope has destroyed your admiralty, but not ours. You've got a problem with that side of the law in your courts and in your parliament. Oaths of office and sovereignty and <coughs> jurisdiction and authority. Okay, you're up against all of those things. I'll be mentioning these at the meeting in Gisborne for the land block in Ruatoria about that. And soon a girl will be there listening to what's being said. Okay? Very serious stuff, John Key and Jerry Masprai, Governor General. Very serious allegations I make. I stand by my word. It's up to you to refute it. If you don't, your silence I'll accept as guilty as I'm um, going to build levy debt of you. Those big pound notes that are sitting here. Trillion pounds each. John Key and Jerry Matapurai, before you go to England, you're going to get the bill. A trillion pounds on your head, bounty from the sheriff. Me and this flag and the chiefs of Ngāpui. They're the contractors. Nobody else in this country. They are the contractors who went to England and made a contract. Not everybody else who signed later. That doesn't make a legal document. It's just those food chiefs, 13 of them or 38 of them, who bothered to do it. That's who I'm talking about. And the people who are standing there in place of their ancestors better have their surnames, not anybody else who's whangai or adopted to them or using another surname. I use one or you use your own surname. Manukau's use Manukau, Parapara's use Parapara, and nobody else touches those names. You use your own names in a court 
under Moai King William Trust and Moai King William Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Okay, all the cases go in there online, and Kingi Taurua, the chief of that Marae and his land, Kasarea, all that cut out of those land, the Treaty Waitangi grounds and Titi blocks. I've got the titles here for that, and the original Ututonga. I've got all the history of Ututonga out now to know the title I'm holding, Ututonga, changed the names to Williams, but it's still Hare Ututonga on their title. Nobody else's surname. Don't bother trying any claims against somebody else's surname. You'll be in trouble because the Admiralty Law will squash it. Okay, the Admiralty King's Bench Law is the highest law in the world in Britain. That's our law. That's the sheriff <coughs> law and the chief of that piece of land. Not any piece of land anywhere else in the country. Just where that Marai sits and the ship next to it in the paddock with its mast. That's a bit of the ship. It equals of the whole ship. Okay? It's not just a flagpole. It's the Admiralty and it holds the power to the whole world. For that matter, the Queen's business. The King's business. Okay? I'm talking for the King's business people. And um, uh, Jamie, looking forward to you going to East Cape to see the sun come up and also to see some of your uh, connections in the Maryland Court. We get a chance to go there. I'll show you how to do things. And Desmond. Desmond Wano, he's my only family member who has followed me religiously through the years. Right back when he came up from Dunedin. He's been living in Dunedin for a long time. So that's Munster. He can take care of Munster in that part of this country in the native sense the titles that I'm putting together he's picking up pretty fast he knows a lot so don't be surprised that uh, being quiet and watching and listening he's been the only one in my family that's bothered to listen to something real that's evolving back to the future. Okay, so that's a good one for you, Desmond. I just want to show you my gear. My, my, I'm more happy under the sea than I am on the road uh, with, with, with the fishes, right? Um, I want to take them down with me, but I want to see if they will let me take them on the bus. But it's a lot of thing to lug around that I might leave that for next time on the car, Jamie. We would have had a eat of seafood. I go to my favourite spots, and um, we can think about that. Um, but I'm just glad I got them yesterday. Um, the regulator and the bottle uh, the day before. So that makes up the full set now, and I can go swimming anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Okay, uh, so. One more time, to you, um, Jerry Mataprai, Andrews, and John Key, Prime Minister of New Zealand, this video, I'm making this statement quite clear, and it's, I swear, that I tackle the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. This is a verbal affidavit. Everything I'm saying can be used against anybody or against myself. You have the right to say something, because if you don't, you lose. In the fourth sense of the battle, we confiscate anything that you own if I accuse you. John Key and Jerry, what's the right? Now, this is what's happening. The Pope will kick in his New World Order law on the 16th of July. 
2016. I'm just warning the government here in New Zealand, you, John Key, and Jerry McBride, and your police minister, uh, Julius Collins, and Justice Minister Amy Adams, that what I say is the truth, that the Pope is bringing new law, and you're still using his old law, the UCC law, canon law, courier law, uh, civil law, and Admiralty bank law, and the Admiralty mortgage laws. You're still using them, and that's what I refer to issues on 60, 77 Cook Street, or 66, Cook, 61 Cook Street, title that I'm confiscating because of the fraud inside that title. Now, John Key, I saw your secretary um, online again being accused of the Panama scam tax havens here in New Zealand. I've got that issue as well to put on to that Cook Street case. You're all liable to each other in that case. I keep saying it on these videos that you have a problem, John Key and Kerry, much right. When you go to England, you've got a problem when you get there because they'll be waiting for you to make you accountable for the Queen's fraud business. We're going to seize her business and her assets back into the King's Bench Court, Whitehouse. Okay, Kingy, do you hear that? If you're watching this video, I'm serious about you and Peter. John Cosgrove in Australia. They married my family, Kingy, the Wanoas, the Cosgroves and the Wanoas go together. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking this loud. And the capital letters are that loud too on my side. Now I can see a lot of people making big capital, you know, because you know what it's doing? It's killing off all this capital letter writing and uh, documents that the Crown uses to defraud people with names that are in capitals as companies, people's names of companies, corporations, Crown corporations. I'm having you up for that, John Key, for not disclosing what you're doing to my case and me in that bell pond that they're helping themselves like vultures to a pig trough with my name and that inheritance money that they're digging out for themselves. That's what I have an issue with. The fraud is that, John Key and Jerry McBride. You're liable to what Detective Natalie Flower do Brown did to forge all her documents. Not a lawyer. She's not a lawyer. She didn't get a lawyer to do it because they haven't got their stamp on it. There's no court stamp on it to allow her to speak as if she's a lawyer, to write legal documents in legalese. That's where I got you, John Key, because your agents of the Crown are defrauding me personally. Me, damaged me and injured me, the real me that you arrested. Okay, so we got a, uh, real issues that are mounting up the bill against you. I have ANEX, ANEX debt collectors in England. I pay them every time to recover all that money that I put together for those owners on Cook Street. It's mounting up. I warned you, I warned you that it's a trillion pound a day. And I warned you that the longer you're on that land occupying it illegally, it's up to you to counterclaim my claim against your person, you the person, and your corporate names and capital. All right? Or your corporate business is another person. Every business corporation is a person. Now, you're going to have to do something quick because it's not worth going to a lawyer, because they're in it too. You see, the convincing lawyers that ignored me and never put a notice on me to back off didn't. So 
they are liable too, as much as the judges are. The first judge I had was Fraser. Grant Fraser found me not guilty in the Auckland District Court. It removed him from the damage that his court did against me. He's only speaking for the court and the registrar, the sheriff in that court, is liable too. Because he said, the moment he said I'm innocent, cleared me. And then the police got up and opened a new case and said to the judge, Fraser, I got issues with Mr. Wānoa. See, uh, Mr. Wānoa is a person in the legal sense, a company. So, me as natural person, lowercase, is not one of those. And the issue I'm having here is to convey to my barrister, working in the Queen's Bench Court, to interpret what I'm saying from the Crimes Act 61, 1961 Act. I'm quoting from there all of the offences. Each and every Crown agent, corporation, person has committed against me and my chiefs. Waitangi. They'll all be coming to that court hearing when we have it. It'll be a showdown because this flag is going up on Waitangi Marae. Once it's up on that flagship of King William IV, you're gone, John T. and Jerry Matapai. It's all over. It's all over because it's the authority. It was always. It was always sitting opposite the British flag ready to go up the top. When we knew what to do and carry on and we got our documents in order and Suna Kora there, Prime Minister of our government, she can run this government by herself. Virtue. That clever. Right? That's one of your Maori people that you've fashioned a tribe for yourselves. I'm steering her over into the Moai Hapu native government, commercial government and commerce and Commonwealth government of the world. I'm just saying. Okay, all of that lot wrapped up in a five pound note. Okay, so that's all I want to say. I'll just show you once again. Um, right here. You see? There's my bottle in my backpack. What is Oh, I forgot the dog weights. They're under the bed. There you go. There's my tube to swim out in. My catch bag for the fat crayfish. My backpack for my every other bits, my lunch. And I can put the fish burley in there. In, in this. It'll make you pump up your muscles, okay? And um, my snorkel and goggles. Okay? So that's really what I am passionate about diving. I would love to. At Rangituki has set up a uh, training course for divers, uh, uh, scuba divers, to go deep into research, stationed there, and um, a mass amount of divers from all over the country, all over the world, to come there. That's one of my real projects, so that we can have them do all the research on the seabeds around New Zealand, Pacific Islands, and anywhere in the world we put contracts together for them to go to. So um, that's on the agenda. That's high on the agenda um, in my books and plans, apart from the tidal turbine project at uh, Ranfilly Bank, East Cape. That's uh, the other priority as well. Suna Cora wants me to build the turbines here then to go and build them in Ireland and Scotland. That's where I wanted to go. The demand for power up in the coal places up north in the hemisphere is paramount in these tidal turbines to make lots of power for jet engines uh, mainly and rocket fuel um, as well for underwater rockets, um, submarines. Okay, and the turbines are running on rocket fuel too. Our tidal turbines, um, turbines are pushed around by rocket fuel engines. Right? So that's just another added feature uh, 
to that land block in Ruatoria, the east coast, it's got manuka trees, kanuka trees, that's the old manuka honey, uh, and 40, about 45 hectares, that's um, quite a big area. Um, um, so I'll be looking at the maps to see its um, area and vegetation on Google. Uh, before I go to the meeting, I'll write a few notes so I can talk about it and if necessary I'm hoping to get funding and everything up and running before long with Kingi and Sunakora. Sue's tied up heavily with the Russians with uh, treaty agreements uh, they've got the convention in the United Nations already set up with Russia um, if the British don't hurry up and get to Rangitukia with their military then the Russians um, will be coming there under Sue. But I prefer to have the British there first. If you're watching this video, I'm serious. You're coming to Rangitukia on the, sea, on the Rangitukia Waipu River. It's a long enough place to put a big long airport 13 kilometers long to bring in the big Russian aircraft there to monitor the South Pole and the Southern Oceans from that point. Okay, so that's a military... Um, proposal from me and from Sue and Kingi to bring the military straight in there right now right now this minute when I get this flag up in Waitangi with the chiefs and specifically the Ngāpui chiefs contract private contract with King William this is a private contract it's nobody's business that's why I am tell everybody else Tainui's got their own flag They've got contracts, I don't know. I only looked at this one and Mo Mohi Manukau and their Manukau contract here and also Tainui, uh, um, Ngāpui's, the head contract. Okay? I'll say that once more. This 1835 Declaration of Independence flag is a Ngāpui chief's tribe's private contract and nobody's business. Right, that's legally what I'm saying. I'm their legal advocate for their land titles and this flag as the surrogate for Napoli. Right? And I worry about anybody else signing later that contract, just that North Rock. Don't argue because it can be used against you. Right? Because it's a British matter and that's the other part that no one can just simply walk into. Not unless you've got the right documents and some evidence of proof who you're talking about and who you're talking for. So that's what I'm there for. I'm there to keep things in perspective as far as the courts are concerned and law. Uh, and teaching Jamie and um, Desmond this part of the law. They've been with me long enough, especially Jamie's been with me long enough and with, from the Stuart family She's more a uh, Scotland Yard type of person that comes up behind me to check any documents. So she's got a steep learning curve. If she's going to come to England, she wants to go, but uh, we'll see when the time comes of her commitments. Um, this is a full-on subject that I'm going on. Um, if she's happy about going, then that's fine. Otherwise, I'll go alone. As always, with my trusty sword, dead. That's all I did. Okay? And um, so we're still researching her whakapapa uh, to Ireland and Scotland, and so am I, to make sure we're talking online. You see the power note with our faces on. That's real. I'm making that statement quite clear here that those power notes are legal levy debtor instruments against anyone who has defrauded the hapu, natives, and the people of the world. It's a common law court um, document, uh, instrument, legal instrument, in the legal sense under the Admiralty. It'll only happen in Admiralty law and no other law that we use that power note because it's all commercial 
money is commercial. Money is commercial as ever it was in the British law system. Um, uh, I'm not talking about Russian or Japanese money or Chinese money or anything. I'm talking about British pound note that was given to us, the natives, in 1888. So, uh, John Key, that's what I'm saying. I have the authority to put these notes on your head for anything you've done wrong. You can tell me one thing you've done wrong and you'll have to deny what I'm accusing you of as you defrauded me with my name and the bail bond put on the stock market. By the way, that stock market, that's where King William was stationed before he became king in New York. So all that commercial stuff through Admiralty, he set it up in New York. Okay, that's what I'm saying about what I know that I'm using all of that against Obama and you. The Muslim people, John Key, you're mixed up with the fraud violence that's happening in right through the world. Bringing in Muslim people from their country, taking it off them, dis dislodging them from their, displacing them from their country, and taking all the minerals and everything else for your wealth, for your own private commercial contract interests. That's treason you're causing, John Key, because you're selling off TPP resources here without our consent. And not for the country's sake, but for your private company. If the money's going somewhere else, I'm going to do an audit to see where it all went, who injured Invest and all those companies that are tied up in there through the New Zealand Business Roundtable before, Intuition New Zealand Limited now. That's that company that you own, John Key, and also Waitangi National Trust. That trust company, John Key, gets the bill with you. Liable against that company sitting in Waitangi Marae. We're going to seize it against your fraud. Connections in joinder or accessories, third party, to the fraud against me and Key and soon the Alright? You've defrauded us and offended me, Kingi Tauru, and Sunakora, the Maori government prime minister, what she calls herself. I'm going to switch her out into another name because you corrupted the Maori part of the natives. John Key. So that's all. That's all I want to say now. That'll do for this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you later and um, speak to you again. Oh, by the way, yesterday, the nurse came around to see me. She, she comes around to see me and she says, have you taken your pills? And I said, I'll be honest with you, I haven't. And she says, why not? And I said, because me and myself said no more for a month. And we're going to trial period to see what difference it makes with no medication. And she says, well, come on, we'll do a test. And it came out like this. On the 2nd of June, 2nd of 